Hi, thanks for coming back. It's Matt here again with MyWebBro.com. And today I want to talk to you about geofencing. Uh, geofencing often gets confused with geotargeting. They're two very different things. But I think by showing you seven examples of geofencing in the real world, um, I think you'll have a better understanding of what this technology is and what uh, the applications are for business owners. Um, let's get right into it. The first and most obvious, I think, um, example of, of geofencing in regards to advertising as a business is going to be an application like Voucher Cloud. So many, many people in, in, in this company claims, um, I think, what do they claim? Uh, Five million downloads in the UK. So that's a lot of downloads, but it's obviously not everybody. But one in ten smartphone uh, reach one in ten smartphones with a Voucher Cloud geofencing promotion. That's a pretty lofty claim that one in ten smartphones have the Voucher Cloud app installed on them. But that's what they're claiming. So if you've got the Voucher Cloud app installed on your phone, right? Um, and you're anywhere near one of these businesses, like a Domino's Pizza, you're going to get a little offer pop up, 25% off your Domino's Pizza order or whatever it is. So what is that? That's the Voucher Cloud app on your Android device utilizing your GPS and or GPS modules in these brick and mortar locations that target an advertisement in an app, right? Let's not confuse that with like a Google ads campaign where you're targeting people through search queries or through a map, uh, geo-targeting through a map radius, right? This is an application on an Android device. Someone has opted in, they've downloaded it, and they use this application for the purposes of being advertised to through geofencing. So that's the most, I think that's the most, um, misunderstood application that geofencing utilizes is is that it is an application it's an app on a phone so so let's let's get that right out of the way okay and uh these guys this is what it would look like voucher cloud you're near tesco get a free coke zero in store today so i spent a lot of time on the voucher cloud um, website and technology because i think it's the most obvious utilization of of geofencing for advertising purposes um, Another big proponent of geofencing is Uber, Uber and Lyft. Let me explain why. Airports and certain sporting events, some concert venues, these places do not technically allow for Uber pickups because those drivers are not technically licensed in that jurisdiction to pick up uh, customers from those locations. They're not taxi companies, right? So how do they? how do you stop an Uber driver from picking up someone who just landed at LAX. Geofencing. You can't stop a person, but you can stop the phone from working. You can stop the app from doing the thing within certain boundaries, right? And so you install a module in an airport parking lot, and then the app communicates with the module and that the Uber drivers have to all corral in this little area waiting for their customers and then they dispatch from that little area, preventing them from doing the loops around and the loop de loos and the pulling up and stealing uh, clients that haven't already paid for their fares. So that's how Uber and Lyft and those companies are utilizing geofencing um, through those modules and those locations. Um, a, big, a big proponent of geofencing in the retail world is Walmart. Um, Walmart and Starbucks, but I want to talk about Walmart first. So many people have the Walmart app installed on their phones. It's incredible. My wife has the Walmart app installed on her phone, and I think it was to pay bills and stuff. But if you've got the Walmart app installed on your phone and you pull into a Walmart parking lot, that app might notify you that there's an in-store special that's enticing to you. Um, it knows you. It knows your shopping habits. It knows you just pulled into the parking lot. So... This is a great example of, uh, again, someone's got the app on their phone, though, and then geofencing can be utilized. And Walmart probably is one of the um, few companies in the world that had the budget to experiment with this technology back when it was still just, an, just in its infancy. So, cool. Cool stuff. You guys remember Yik Yak? Yik Yak was a social media website. It was very different from Facebook or LinkedIn and these things because it was completely anonymous chat. Kind of like Reddit, how Reddit, you go to Reddit, you say something, It's your username is cryptic, nobody knows who you are, you get upvoted and you're a Reddit star, nobody knows who you are. Yik Yak was similar to that in that it used geofencing. So I've got the Yik Yak app on my phone again. My phone is a GPS 
location device by default. Um, Yik Yak tells everyone in a five mile radius to look at my post, but no one outside of that five mile radius. So if I'm on a college campus, Yik Yak was really cool. Studying for my midterms, man, this test is gonna suck. Only people within that radius could see that post, making it very hyper local, very community, and also super anonymous, right? So that was cool. Yik Yak was valued at $400 million in 2015. 2016, they closed their doors and shut down. Whew, I don't know what happened there, but someone, someone didn't love that idea. Starbucks. Starbucks is huge with the geofencing. I remember when online ordering first came about, recognizing a geofencing technology in that user experience that they later did away with, and I'll explain why really quick. The online app for Starbucks is on almost all of our cell phones, if we have a gold card especially. We order through it, we can, we can pay through it, we get our rewards through it, we get our notifications through it. I'm driving past a Starbucks, but placing an online order at a different Starbucks, right? Because I'm going somewhere. The phone used to say, don't you want to place your order with this closest location? And it would be really easy to accidentally say yes. And then you show up to the other location and it's not there. So they've, since they've rearranged some of that so that now you tell it where your favorite location is and you, you, you confirm where you're placing your order, I think even more than once now, instead of using geofencing to recommend the location that you're placing your order at. Um, so they also utilize geofencing for other things like like they could very easily say, you know, you're you're in the you're driving past the Starbucks parking lot and there's a Dunkin Donuts on the other side of the road. Um, Starbucks can say, come in for happy hour Tuesday through the app that through your notifications on your app. So could Dunkin Donuts. I'm sure Dunkin Donuts has an app, too. But the funny thing is going to be, you know, who gets your who gets your coffee business that day isn't going to depend on the geofencing. But it's just another notification on your phone to be on the top of on top of mind. So good on you, Starbucks. Hey, we all have heard of Nest smart thermostats. A smart thermostat is nothing more than a geofencing campaign in your home. The Nest smart module sits on your wall and your phone is the, is the, is the geofencing um, module that, that, that tracks your location. So, so your, your Nest thermostat recognizes that you just left the radius of your home with your cell phone because you don't leave home without your cell phone and it's using your cell phone to determine that nobody's home, turn down the heater or, or Matt just came home, turn the heater back up. And that's, that is geofencing uh, at its finest. I think, you know, this, this ability to make technology interact with us seamlessly and we don't have to do anything is I think the most critical component in technology that's that's working for us in the future. I mean, not having to tell my thermostat I'm home is pretty much as cool as it gets, and that's geofencing. The last company I want to talk about is Amazon. You, I, I almost can't talk about e-commerce without talking about Amazon, but really quickly, I want to tell you two ways that they are going to use geo, geofencing or are using geofencing. The first reason, you've seen these Amazon lockers. If I place an order on Amazon, guess what? I've got the Amazon app on my cell phone. Again, it's all about an app, right? This stuff doesn't just happen magically. I've got the Amazon app on my phone. I place an order. That thing's in my locker. I drive past the locker. Why wouldn't it remind me you've got something sitting in the locker? Bloop. Hey, there's something sitting in your Amazon locker. Why don't you pick it up, right? It helps get that locker fill, uh, empty so that someone else can put something in it, right? So there's only a certain amount of spots in that locker. So how do you how do you speed up that process? People come in and get their stuff out of the locker. That's one simple way. Another way that they're using it is a really important thing. Geofencing in regards to drone deliveries is, I think, the only reason why drone deliveries are possible. You cannot have drones flying around overhead over elementary schools and 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 soccer fields and churches and weddings and flying over Super Bowls, right? Because someday one of those drones is going to break down and crash. It's just inevitable. What Amazon is working on is, again, geofencing to keep drones outside of certain airspaces, right? Simple and simple solution to this problem. Install a geofencing module in an elementary school. It says that in a, in a, in a quarter mile radius, 
a drone will not enter that airspace. It's very simple utilization of geofencing in regards to those drone deliveries. But again, the 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 development of that technology is probably one of the most important aspects of making that um, a reality, those drone deliveries a reality. So anyway, it was great showing you these seven examples of geofencing. Hopefully we all learned something. Uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can find me on Facebook. It's my web bro. Um, you can find my other company is Das Wow. We do digital advertising. Um, it's digital advertising solutions. So we do search engine optimization and, and uh, website development. Um, check us out on LinkedIn and uh, have a great day. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.